Hello, Hello guys. guys, you're welcome back to my channel. My name is Bukumi BK Crown. So guys, I'm here with this my special guest again. Hi. And his name is my name is Abu Gosu Lichi. Super excited to be here. And I know today we'll be learning something new and yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for coming to my you're channel. Welcome. So we're gonna be checking out a video together titled Um the uh, great the answer to Christian lady about covering, covering the yeah. head by Ahmed the Dat. Yeah. So let's watch. All right, let's go. Um, I've been told that women in Islam wear a veil because in this way men will treat them respectfully. Um, but I see the veil as a form of oppression because why should they have to cover themselves um, because of the weakness of men? Shouldn't they be treated with respect regardless? Could you please explain the veil and did Mary have to wear a veil? Madam, Madam, your Bible says, your holy Bible says, you know, Paul, Paul, Paul is telling you that the woman must cover her head, that the woman who doesn't cover her, shave off her hair. Your Bible says that. The woman, the woman who bathes her hair, says, shave them off, shave it off. That's what the Bible says. And you woman, the, your Bible says, she must not be allowed to open her mouth in the church. But that's your churches, they don't believe all that. And your people don't believe in that. So you are inviting trouble. You know, because of this, in America, in New York, no woman is safe after dark. No woman is safe in France. During daytime, women have been raped in the street and people just walk by, looking the fun. Say, or maybe they're enjoying themselves. Woman is being raped. No, no, I said, you are inviting it. Look, this modesty, the nuns, the nuns, you know, the nuns, Roman Catholic Church. Nobody gives them a second look. If Mary, the mother of Jesus, came along, you won't give her a second look. But my dear sisters, those women on your gold coast at the Scarborough and all that with bikinis and tangas and G-strings, look. Sure. It's attracting, look, even an old man like me. If, if I went there, I tell you, I'll be burning inside. I'm telling you. Look, this is the nature of man. God made us like that. The thing that allures man more than anything on earthly existence is woman. Do you know that? I don't know. The Quran says, the Quran says, Zuyina linnasi hubbu shahwati minan nisa. Fear in the sight of men is the love of things they covet. Number one, minan nisa, women. Walbaneen, then son. You know, I've got 11 sons. I can make my own football team. You know how, how the, you know, it makes me feel proud. I've got 11 sons, you know, my own football team, my own cricket team. Mm -hmm. Well, Banin, and number three, well, Anatir al Mukantarad min al Zahabi al Fidda, and hoarded heaps of gold and silver, and wealthy land, and horses branded for excellence, and all this. This is the list that is given in the Quran. Number one, women. The Quran says, the thing that allures man most on this earthly existence is woman. And I'm telling my Western friends that I don't have to prove that to you. I don't have to convince you. I said, you see, in my country, in the city of Durban, city of Durban, I think we'll end with this. We'll end with this. Okay? We'll end with this. In the city of Durban, there is a firm called Lucian Motors. They sell second-hand trucks. You know, lorries, lorries, trucks. You call them trucks here too? Trucks. We call them trucks. And on the trucks that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the truck. Then G North, they sell farm implements. And on the tractors that they advertise, there's a woman in the bikini on top of the tractor. I'm asking these Westerners, I said, what has a woman in the bikini got to do with a second hand truck or with a tractor? Except the man. You see, the woman is being dangled, so read the Edwards. And BMW, I don't know you have BMWs here. It's a motor car, it's a motor car supposed to be a little better than the Mercedes-Benz. I'm not in the market for it. You see, I started with the Volkswagen Beetle, I did 120,000 miles, and I had to change for another Beetle, and another Beetle. Hmm. Wow. 
Muslim women that cover their head and wear hijab. What can you say about them? Well, like you see, there's one thing I love about the Muslims here. Yeah. They practice it. They follow it dito dito. Their parents. Sometimes they say Muslims are aggressive when it comes to their mm -hmm. religion. But if they sometimes I believe the way people see us aggressive, if they don't do that way, they're going to lose values. The way most of our Christians were accepting everything we see. See, yes. You see, they like you're covering your head. You're going to yeah, you're going to cover your head. Yeah. When they're going to mark it, they cover their head. Wait, like. They follow it religiously. The Bible says we should cover our hair, and if you know, you should yeah. shave it. And the woman says, it's an honor. Let me so read um, a verse here. First Corinthians eleven six says, "If the woman does not cover her head, she might as well cut her hair. And since it is shameful thing for a woman to shave her head or cut her hair, she should cover her head." But now that most churches now even accept. Ladies, not covering the eye. What do you? What can you say about that? My mind. I always say to them, yeah. I don't know. The few are more indoctrinated in the kind of church I attend, like in the past, uh, you know, a cake kind of. Well, mm. this is my belief. If it's in the Bible, it's in the scriptures, I think it should be followed. That is mm -hmm. my my say or my take on that. Now. Opposed to, they say you're following what, the, um, saying those are the pastors, you bring up something, they say it's the Old Testament, but this is in the New Testament, mm. written by the people you say you follow, are the disciples of Christ Jesus. And this person is telling you, look at the way you go, and you're choosing to pick what you feel you should take and leave the rest. It's not your business. I think you're not following the whole commandments or the whole scripture. Let's keep watching, guys. Beetle and another beetle, then they stop making the beetle. You know the false fucking beetle. They start the golf. So I had to buy Golf number one, Golf number two. I'm still not in the market for a BMW. But I'm forced to read this advert in my newspaper. I see a BMW motor car. And with a woman in the skimpy, skimpiest of bikini, what do you call the tanga? You know the G-string. She, she's standing in front of the motor car. And it's, it's written at the bottom, test drive her now. I'm asking, I'm asking the woman of the car. The woman is buying the car. And her is underlined. Please drive her now. I said, look, this is what you're leading yourself to. This is the Westerner. He sells his mother, his wife, his daughter. His wife is a star. And she's been mangled on the screen, simulating rape. And they, they enjoy it. You, you enjoy your wife being simulated. It's not real rape. But you know, it's simulated, you can see everything about it. She's being raped, your mother, your wife, your daughter. And you enjoy, your wife is a star. Oh, sick, sick. No, Alhamdulillah, praise be to God. We haven't come to that sickness yet, we Muslims. We try, we try to keep away from it. This is your pleasure, your privilege. We have no right to force you. But we say, you are playing with fire, my child, and you're going to pay the price. You're paying the price now, and you will pay the price. This is really interesting, guys. Like, we learned a lot from Amelie that It was even giving an example of um, ladies that wear bikini, they wear short shorts, no clothes. It's trying to tell them that they should dress in modesty, like, dress well. Don't you want to be addressed? You're tempting the guys out there. Now, you're saying that they are, okay, there's too much rapist out there. You know, it's because of the way you dress. There are some people that they actually dress well. And at the same time, you blame the guy. But you two, look at yourself before you go out. To know that, oh, are you not exposing any part of your body to avoid these things happening? No, that is it. The imam's wife or he has to cover the head, even some of the face. Mm. You, you get it. Now, but right now, you see most of our churches, our pastors, God, their wife. A lot of things we people, especially the modern day Christians, we mm. do and we like, it's just alarming because a lot of things have been taken out of context. A lot of things have been cast away. They don't look at it and it's bad. It's very bad because I think if it, you are practicing Christianity and you say you're a Christian and this is something that has been told to us by the disciples mm. or the apostles of the early church, yeah, I think it should be followed. Well, I'm as well guilty of this because most of the time when I go to church, I don't cover my hair because I have this belief that 
God answers prayers. He looks at your heart. What are those people that you know cover the air? You know wear big gowns. You don't know what they do in their secret places. Me, I believe that you have to dress nice, proper. But covering of the air, like I don't really, really like doing that. But what's the way I do it, and I believe that's really the best thing to do. And as time goes on that will change for me maybe because i think oh i'm still young okay for now you know when i marry i, I, I don't have choice not to start doing stuff like that but it's written in the bible that they should cover their hair then now churches are even accepting it even though you don't cover your hair they don't mind they just believe that okay you are here to worship god what would they do for unbelievers that's coming to your church for the first time and is dressing the way he believes, will, it, will you sack the person out of church or because she's not covering her hair? No, you can't. That one too, we have to weigh the whole thing together because you have to think of the unbelievers too that are trying to, you know, move closer to God. They, they are, me, I believe there are differences here. You are a member of a church, you are a believer, you yeah. are a Christian. Okay. And you can't compare yourself with an unbeliever. Unbeliever, right? Yes, you okay. know the truth, you study your Bible, okay. you know it is written in the Bible, you don't have an excuse. If okay. the unbeliever has an excuse because you're trying to bring that person into the fold of Christ, okay. yeah, I believe you should be able to be what an of, example. What of those, um, I don't want to, oh, what will you say about these people that actually minister on the altar, the choirs, that's and they don't cover their hair? That's the worst, because you could see, they say the person shouldn't even speak in church. If it's, mm -hmm. a, it's written. But things are not different now. It says, then that means the word of God has changed over time. That is what you're trying to tell me. Like, it's not only myself perspective. Like, workers, I'm they to go on, on the altar. if the pastor or whoever who is heading that flock mm -hmm. yeah people person in charge of that congregation okay. is not putting that in then what do you expect they don't know that like most people they take the word of their papa the word of their pastor yeah they don't read it for themselves sure. they can't even point mm -hmm. where the sentence is in the bible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you get it mm -hmm. like the church or the elder in place like hey everybody from this sunday coming forward it's compulsory it's yeah day cover day. your hair yeah for, from the dates you see, please cover your head. See, in some Catholic church, they do that. Yeah. In some adoration ministry, you won't even There's wear trousers into it. Exactly. If you enter a church, this Anglican church, and you know, when they'll give you an handkerchief. Yes. You actually have an handkerchief, you will not enter. Exactly. You will not so enter. So if you know you're coming, that is the way. It doesn't mean that your are members who's going to run away. No. Oh, this mm -hmm. people might be. Oh, this people. Nah, but if you maintain yeah, right. that thing, it's a it's, discipline. Yes, it's, it's a foundation. The thing has come out from the from the early Christian, from the leaders of the church, and you're telling me because you are interdenominational and you know Pentecostal or the new generation church. And I see whatever you I keep saying this thing, whatever you do, you should read. Read. Only when you read, you know um mm -hmm. what you, you gather your facts, you gather your things together. You know, because your papa said well, your papa is a human being like you, you might misinterpret, mm -hmm. he might misread. That day he might not be in the mood, his wife might have gotten him angry when he's reading that scripture. So you might not use the tone. That the scripture is saying hmm. he might some a call might come in he is distracted he jumped a scripture and goes to the other one and continue you know a lot of factors could contribute when he's reading that kind of passage he's coming to preach to you hmm. you know and then he's having another inspiration from somewhere else probably he was angry or something happened he's a bad mood exactly. or he was too happy yes. and he writes out so that you message have to follow the scripture yeah What's so the bible not yeah, exactly it. so when you answer when you read when they say something you want to challenge it not challenge them per se because you're a leader but you have to challenge that thing when you're not sure about it even when you challenge them sometimes they go back to read to make more research and they come out with truth and you're like oh look look what i said sometimes because if they are like distant enough to come out and say oh I was wrong, I misunderstood, or I misread. But most people, because they say we hear from God, they mm. find it difficult to come back to the congregation and like, oh, I made a mistake. Mm. So we should know what is right and what is wrong. It's written in the Bible. It's written for our learning. But if you want to come to church and show us your bold straight and stuff, come on. Hmm. Really nice, you know, watching, guys. Thank you for watching, guys. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button for more like, share, and comment. And I will drop this you know, channel link in my description box for more reaction videos guys i'll see you guys in my next video bye